Every single time I come to Ghana, when I get to the top of the plane and the air hits me, there's something like in my whole spirit that just decays. Like we're all running from the UK because it's hard. It's, it's a really hard life. And it's not a place where you are readily accepted or readily celebrated. As a, as a person of African descent, you know, and we grow leaders, we grow innovators, we grow um, entrepreneurs, we grow um, people that can fit into every sector of society. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I go by the name me, myself, and I. Epic it was. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like, and comment as well. And thank you so much for always doing that. I'm here with this amazing, beautiful lady. Let's get to know you. Please, what's your name? So, my name is Justina. Justina. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Justina. Let me see what brought you to Ghana. Oh, it's home. It's home. Mm -hmm. You Ghanaian? Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow, born and raised here? Yeah? No, born and raised in the UK. Born and raised in the UK? Yeah. For but many that's, years? That's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> that's not her fault, you understand? <laughs> yeah. So, for how many yeah. years? Um, All my life. So, I'm in my 40s. Or, well, I'm about to enter my 50s, but I should start claiming 50. So we lived here for a period of time when I was younger, when I was about between the ages of three and like six and a half, seven, we lived here and then we went back to the UK. Wow. I remember going to school, I remember using my lunch money to buy milk powder. Okay, wow. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. I remember um, like I had like a metal stove and we used to get charcoal and we used to like be making soup. We had like little metal pots. So outside will be like making our own soup with leaves and things like that. I remember that. Um, yeah, that's mainly what I can remember. School was very, very busy. It, it was very big. It was like nursery. Oh, yeah. okay, so okay. Like nursery, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was very big, lots of children. Oh, yeah. okay. That's all I can remember. Okay, wow. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's your childhood memories mm -hmm. about buying, you know, um, Milo, um, Nido and all that. Wow. Do you remember yours? Let me know in the <laughs> comment section. Let me know in the comment section. Education. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about education. I'll be an MPHU. Okay. So, um, my background is in education. So, I, before coming here now, I was a head teacher of um, a school for young people who are struggling in their education. So, it's very different, but in some ways it's very similar. So I think some of the education system in Ghana is modelled on like the UK model of how things are done. I, um, in terms of difference, I guess I would say that there is a lot more emphasis on young people having a voice in the UK and kind of being quite independent. And I think from what I've seen in terms of Ghana education, um, children are very much about kind of absorbing the information that their teachers give them and being able to respond to that information and there's a big difference in terms of like um, attitudes, behaviour, expectations, discipline, very big, big, big difference between Ghana and UK. Wow, do you think um, we will get close some years to come? Um, I, I think Probably it will, but I don't know if it should. Um, I don't. I don't think the UK system is the model that Ghana should be aspiring to follow. Because even in the UK, we ourselves struggle within it. In that the system that we have doesn't work for all of our children, mm -hmm. and so some children are able to manage and get through it and, and are very successful in it, but other children are not, and that's a problem. And that's a lot of conversations that us within the education sector are having to say actually. Our, our curriculum and our way of learning has to change and has to evolve in order that all of our children can succeed in it because at the moment only some succeed and that's not fair wow. that is not fair that is what not fair at all um, may we know what you do so i'm an educationist so i'm a qualified teacher okay. um, and i'm as a head teacher and i do a lot of work around inclusion so how to ensure that um, people are, particularly our young people, their voices are heard, 
and they're included and they're catered for and that all children, regardless of their background, their economic status, their gender, their age, um, their thinking processes, that they are included in their education and they have an experience that means that they can reach their full potential. Because at the moment, it's very much dominated by the people who think alike. So people who think differently or their brains are wired slightly differently, they're not catered to in the way that they need to be because those people are the creatives, the, you know, they're brilliant minds, but they just think differently. Okay. And so we need to find a way to make sure that they're celebrated and they're included as much. So that's a lot of my work that I do. How do we do that? How do we make sure that all children are included and are celebrated and allowed to grow? Wow. Do you know my next question that I want to ask you? No, what's your next question? <laughs> Okay, so in some years to come, do you think um, opening a school in a motherland is possible for you to be here and uh, um, be doing what you're doing out there here? Mm -hmm. um, absolutely, it is possible. I think for me, one of the things that I've, I've been doing a lot of research out here in terms of what does education look like in Ghana, and I think for me, we need to move away from this idea of that when we come from, when diasporans come back home, mm -hmm. that we've got to come and establish something independently because there are some amazing schools in Ghana already. So actually for me, what I want to do is I want to connect with existing schools and help those schools develop and grow, um, learn from those schools, but also share my experience and my knowledge um, so that we can build a, a model of education that means that none of our children are left behind, none of our children um, suffer or don't reach their potential you know and we grow leaders we grow innovators we grow um, entrepreneurs we grow um, people that can fit into every sector of society and and can compete on a world basis because we have we have we have the potential there's no the days of when the world looked down on Africa and African young people and their knowledge and their skills it's coming to an end if it's not ended already and so we need to now understand that we have the skill set to be on par with our European neighbours and our, the Americas and so yeah we need to make that happen. Wow you know bringing in the African insight um, have you ever traveled to any African countries apart from Ghana? No sadly I haven't it's something that I really want to do but uh, sadly I haven't I, I've spent most of my adulthood reconnecting with Ghana because when you grow up in the UK there is a little there is a disconnect so it's about re reconnecting with the motherland reconnecting with Ghana um, and just building my experience and my networks and my relationships within Ghana so once that's solidified then absolutely exploring wider within Africa is absolutely I have my list I want to go to Tanzania I want to go to um, Senegal okay. I want to go to wow. um, Gambia I want to also go to Angola there's yeah there's I, w I want to go to Nigeria there's lots of places I want to go to so we'll definitely make that happen what about Togo I haven't thought about Togo which I, I guess I don't know why it's so close but yes we can have Togo too <laughs> <laughs> we can add to <laughs> It's so nice to also, I mean, go to different African countries to to explore. There are so many amazing places in mm. Africa, and it's so beautiful. Um, it's just sometimes sad that we don't see most of the beautiful places mm. on the internet. Oh, it's always we are poor, we are this, we are that, we are it's so disgusting. We are trying our best to also change the narrative of you know the negativity in Africa to make it a better place for we all. Okay, in terms of your traveling, what are some of the experiences? I guess one of the positive things is the understanding that the world is a much bigger place than what you grew up in um, and experiencing a different way of living, different way of doing things. But I guess one of the highlights has been realising that we're not so different. Okay. You know, so even, even though I've only been to Ghana, I've met so many um, different cultures within Ghana, people wow. from different places. And you realise that actually we're very, very connected. 
you know, we are we are a one people. There's slight differences in our foods and our you know, and there's differences in our dialect and, and our, our culture. And the commonality is something that I think we should celebrate because there's actually a lot more that binds us together than separates us. So that's probably been the highlight of travelling, just learning more about the world and Wow. Yeah. That is nice though. And uh, I, I like the fact that uh, we've been able to learn so much um, once we're traveling. It's not just traveling to have fun, but traveling to as well. And at the same time, have fun, but it's educative as well. Mm. Yeah, it's really, really educative. But you don't, you don't buy a mind. No, no, no. I think it's true. And I guess one of the things that has helped in my traveling is it cemented how much I love my home in Ghana. And actually, for me, I don't have a burning desire to go to the Dubais and those places. I've been to America a few times and I've been to other places and actually Ghana has so much to offer, as much if not more to offer, um, that I don't feel like I have to go to those other places to have lived. You know, there's still so much in Ghana that I have yet to explore. Even Accra in itself. Yeah. There's so much in Accra that I still have to experience and explore. So, you know, much more like Kamasi and you know, the northern region. There's yeah. just so much in Ghana alone that you could just tour Ghana for so long and still be learning new things. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't, my desire isn't to go to these other countries as much because there's more than enough here. Do you miss Ghana? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's very depressing when I'm leaving here. And by God's grace, I'll be here permanently very, very soon. Um, but yeah, I really do miss Ghana. I miss, you know, there's something like every single time I come to Ghana, when I get to the top of the plane mm -hmm. and the air hits me, there's something like in my whole spirit that just, it's like your home. Like there's some, I can't explain it. It's like when you smell the air and the air hits you and you look out, it's like I'm home. I've, I've not been anywhere else in the world where I felt that sense of belonging. And it doesn't matter how many times I come, I get that feeling every single time. So yeah, when I'm not here, I very much miss Ghana. Wow. Oh, that, that is really deep. Mm. That is really deep. Like, the, the sun and the air hits you and you feel like, yeah, you are home. Mm. And something like, let me know in the comment section. Has like something like that happened to you? Maybe, um, maybe I don't know where you're watching me from. Has something like that happened to you when you are actually going to your motherland and from the plane itself? Let me know, let me know in the comment section because her own is something deep, and I wish to also have that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to have that feeling yeah. one you day. Have to like, go, go and come back. A lot of people say. Like the system over there is better than Africa in the whole, like Ghana as well. What's your thought on that? Um, I think it depends what you're looking for. If you are looking to be somewhere where you can make money, um, then yes, I can understand the desire to go to the UK or go to America because obviously the currency is, is stronger so and the earnings are more. But if you're looking for quality of life, and if you're looking for belonging and you're looking for culture and heritage and you're looking for acceptance, you will not get that in the UK and America. Um, and I say that as someone who's born and been raised in the UK, like being in Ghana, walking the streets of Ghana, operating in Ghana, to see people that look like me, to put the TV on and see people that look like me, to be welcomed by people who do not know me, um, you don't get that in the UK. Like, you know, in the UK, you get on the transport system, no one will look at you, no one will smile at you. If you smile at people too hard, they'll think you're crazy. Wow. Or there, there's a problem. And, and then it's, it's um, a very isolating place. You kind of, you go to work, you come home, you go to work, you come home. And yes, you earn more money, but you pay more tax. And the stress of that life really starts to tell on you. Whereas in Ghana, I found that People can work really hard, but they enjoy the money that they make from working. You have a better quality of life, you know, you have weekends, you have social activities, you have things that you can do. Whereas in the UK, you just get consumed with working. and You don't even see your people, you don't even see your family. You have to really make an effort to see people outside of your home and outside of your workplace. So, for me, there's a much better quality of life. Your opinion is amazing and 
in someone's opinion as well, right? Because People who haven't had that opportunity will think, oh, it's okay for you to say you've lived there, so it's easy for you to say. So if that's your heart's desire, then go for it. However, I will warn you that the grass is not greener, and so the things that you think you're going to get from there is not necessarily the case. Like We're all running from the UK because it's hard. It's, it's a really hard life, and it's not a place where you are readily accepted or readily celebrated. As a, as a person of African descent, understand that when you go to these places, there are going to be people that are going to really mistreat you and really discriminate against you because they don't have any respect for the, the colour of our skin and who we are as humans and people. So understand that you'll have to navigate those things. So you can get all the money in the world, but you end up losing your soul. So you just have to decide which one you think is better. So I don't think I could ever say to someone, don't go. But what I would say to them is be prepared. I think for here, no matter how poor you are, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone who starved to death in Ghana. Somebody will feed you, somebody will give you something, you know, you'll have some family, somebody, somewhere. Whereas in the UK, you're pretty much on your own. Um, and if you need something, you'll need to go to organisations or charities for them to help you. But you're, it's, you don't have the same kind of community that you have here in Ghana. Wow. You heard it all. No, you heard it. You don't, didn't you? You did, right? 